Great news. All those people that you have heard of dying, you know, all the family and friends, all the increased obituaries, all the newspaper readings about people dying, it's not excess deaths. Just a figment of your imagination. It's not happening. You will be glad to know that in the UK, excess deaths are down by 14%. Incredible. Well, if you can't handle conspiracy, I think you better stop right here now because this doesn't make sense to me and I am just sharing with you what I have noted. And so to start off, before I even get into the data, I will show you something very, very interesting. And this is what I think is quite significant. Here we have one of the most outspoken voices globally about excess deaths was Andrew Bridgen, MP from the UK. As fate would have it, he lost his seat. And this here is an article from the 25th of September, 2024, so literally today, the mystery of Andrew Bridgen's vanishing votes. What in the world happened? This guy had won his seat since 2010, he had been stable, then he got kicked out of the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party didn't do well in the election. He was an independent. But here, look at this. The drop from 63% of the vote to 3.2% with just 1,568 votes seems implausible. And he said, after the election, people are coming to me and still saying, I voted for you. My whole family voted for you. What happened? I suspect he was just asking too many questions and therefore he lost his seat. So this, this question about excess deaths seems to be annoying the political class. I don't know why. If more people are dying, why wouldn't you want to know? That's really been the question. Well, is it because maybe they did something in the past few years that could have contributed and they would rather not know? I don't know. But the reality is that it should have been investigated. Now, where I've come from, I saw the excess death flags since January of 2022, the Euromomo statistics, and I was flagging it all over the place, saying, look at this, look at this, look at this. There is a problem. Too many people are dying. We need to look into it. We need to understand the mechanism. And the obvious question was whether or not it could have been, whether or not it could have been connected to the elephant in the room. Now, for anybody who knows, what I mean is that there is an elephant sitting in the room. Nobody knows what it's doing there, but nobody even notices it. it everybody's baffled about what is going on. That's why I think that it's not being investigated, because that's the obvious question. There are only two things that happened in the past four years that could have pushed up excess deaths this much. One of them is COVID, and that certainly could be an ongoing contributor. And the other is an elephant in the room. Now, it still needs to be investigated. So let me break to you first the good news that they have shown. And so this is data from the um, UK statistics, deaths registered weekly in England and Wales, week ending the 13th of September 2024. So this is very updated. They just released this today. So you're getting information right up to date. And they have pointed out here, I'll show it to you here. Uh, there it goes. The number of deaths registered on week 37 was 14.4% lower than the expected number. Brilliant news. So all of the questions that were raised by Andrew Bridgend suddenly disappear because there is no question. And so the politicians who theoretically have now gotten rid of him and all the people who condemned him for asking questions are vindicated because there was never a problem, they say. Don't worry about the fact that almost every week on Match of the Day, somebody else has died at a football stadium who is related to the club. I'm thinking to myself, this is now becoming so regular. I can never remember this happening so frequently. But I guess it's a figment of my imagination. So 
before I go on, just a reminder, I don't want to get too distracted with this, but coming up in another day is my webinar, Health and Wellness Session 3. This here is very important because I will show people how to navigate the health system around COVID. It's not just about you, but it's also about your family. There are a few slots left. So if you want to join, there is a link below. There are just a few slots left and you can join us tomorrow. If it's after that, you'll have to look at the recorded webinar. But let's get back to this question. Now, I'll show you where I think the problem is with regards to the numbers in the UK. All right. I'm not a statistician, but, you know, if you tell me that, you know, a hundred people dying out of a thousand is different from a hundred people dying out of a thousand the last year. That doesn't make sense to me. I just look at numbers. So here is me looking at numbers. These are the figures that they have shown. And so this is showing the weekly deaths. And you can see here, the line here is expected deaths. The bar, blue, number of deaths, all causes and always bank holidays when you have less deaths registered. So the, oh, the circles are down here. So whenever you have a bank holiday, there are usually less deaths registered where that comes up. This is January, 2023. This is September, 2024. So you can see that this is more than a year. This is about 18 months of data. You can see here in January of 2023, when Andrew Bridgen was raising the point, absolutely, there were excess deaths. And this was actually using the average of the years before, including the pandemic. It would have even been lower if you were using the five-year average 2015 to 2019. But even with that, excess deaths were way up in January of 2023. Remember, we are like um, a year and a half on from the Omicron breakout. Well, about a year on from Omicron. Excess that's still way up. Then you can see, so it's still elevated all the way along here. It's just about right. Then there's a light, slight decrease. And then suddenly look here. Whoa. Suddenly, literally overnight, excess deaths are now way down. They changed the methodology here. So the methodology, I don't know. I am not a statistician. I have no idea how the methodology could have changed to make this such a big difference in terms of this bar. And they are now saying currently at this point, 14% below the expected deaths. But if you look carefully at this, this is September 2024. If you draw a line straight across, you'll realize that September 2023 was way below this here. So all of these bars are way below the period of 2023. I'm a simple guy. I just deal with numbers. What I'm interested in is the fact that the same number of people approximately in September 2023 are still dying in September 2024. I think that's a problem. Now, let me explain something very important. I keep on saying this because people don't get it but it was seen in other countries like Bulgaria and so on. They had one of the lowest vaccination rates. And so therefore more people died in the pandemic and of severe COVID. But after they got herd immunity, excess deaths dropped right off because now the virus couldn't circulate and people are dying of normal things. And critically, the people who were at risk of dying with the comorbidities had already died. So they can't die twice. And so this is the point, is that if you have people dying in excess during the pandemic with comorbidities, they can't die again. So what it means is that new people are dying. So even if your excess deaths are normal, back at the same level that it was in 2019, you have way above maybe 10%, 10 to 15% excess deaths because it should be way down. So the 14% that they are saying at the moment, and I'll show you this here, 
in reality, this here should be down here. That's the reality. All of these deaths here should be all the way down here because so many people had died previously in the pandemic. You're only allowed to die once. And so therefore, less people should be dying. Hospitals should be empty because so many people got sick and died. And therefore, we are in a better state. That's not the reality. If you watch just recently, I told you that a &E admissions were the highest they were ever in the NHS. And people keep on saying it's because of immigration. I'm telling you, immigrants don't get sick. <laughs> That's just the reality. I mean, some of them may get sick, but they're usually younger. They're healthy. You know, it's not easy to travel from country to country. So they're oftentimes much healthier than everybody else. They're not going to get sick. The people who are getting sick are people who live in the country and have been there for a long time. So I then went to cross check. And so again, you have to bear with me for looking at statistics and asking hard questions. But here is Euromomo's data, graphs and maps. And this is where I first noticed the abnormality in January of 2022. So I went back to the graphs and maps. And what I found here, uh, let me explain this here. This is, I'll show you, this is all ages. Maybe I should make it a little bit bigger so that you can see this. So this is all ages. And they have here the different years. And gray is 2022, yellow is 2023, and blue is 2024. So you can see here in terms of cumulative deaths, it's rising in 2022. That was Omicron and the elephant. In 2023, it largely stayed about stable, a little bit of a rise towards the end. And in 2024, it seems to be coming down. But you know what you have to look at carefully? This dotted line at the bottom represents where they would expect you to be in terms of excess deaths. So in all three years across Europe, excess deaths were elevated. So Andrew Bridgend was right to ask the question. Now, it seems that in 2024, it's coming down because how many times can people die? If you've got older people with comorbidities, they are likely to pass away. And so when they have died once, they can't die again. So if you've had so many excess deaths over the past few years, you should be below the normal. And so it's absolutely worrying that it is not below the normal. But here is something else that bothers me. And it's only when you look at the data, you realize this. And I think this is now another flag that I'm raising because I think this may be relevant. When you look at the Euromoma data, I showed you all ages up here. But when you look at zero to 14 years, in 2023, it was slightly below. They expected you can, that makes sense. 2022, it was higher. People could have argued that maybe a bit of COVID. But look at 2024. This is rising. Why are 0 to 14 years old dying across Europe? Something is not right. And again, this is why I'm saying you have to look at the numbers. And I would raise the flag on this and say, you need to, to know what is the mechanism that would be causing this young group to be dying at a higher rate, especially if you are elephantizing them. Have to know that. This is really, really important. Now, the reality is that, as I said, based on what happened to Andrew Bridgen, they don't like these questions. It really upsets them. And so I'm learning that anybody who is upset and it doesn't want this question to be asked, be afraid. Be very afraid because from a scientific point of view, if more people are dying, why in the world wouldn't you want to know? Because you could then address it. The only reason that would be the case is if it has either political 
or financial implications that people don't want to address. And therefore, they will put aside the health concerns in order to maintain that perspective. I don't know what else to say other than the fact that we are in difficult times. And from my perspective, I've said this right at the beginning of the pandemic because I was looking at autoimmunity. I am expecting an autoimmune epidemic, circulating virus. This is an absolute nightmare. This is the worst outcome you could have ever imagined. If we had, uh, let me put it to you this way, even though there may be issues because there are side effects and adverse events around the vaccination, if the virus had gone, I would say that it, it probably would have been, it would have just gone away. People would have gradually ignored it and forgotten about it. But nobody anticipated that you could have put out almost 14 billion doses and still have this virus circulating highly. What are the implications of that? You can't be nothing. And so you're having people getting infected with immune priming. This is a disaster. This, in my view, is the worst outcome. This is the worst thing that could have happened. Because now, when do we stop the virus from circulating? Because clearly we can't get to herd immunity. What does it mean for the health of the population? I think the data is showing it. Deaths are up and they're going to remain up for a long period of time. And even more worrying, deaths in younger age groups are up and they're rising. Something is not right, needs to be addressed. And we expect our leaders, you know, it's not, forget politicians, this is public health. There is a responsibility to investigate these things. There was a responsibility from 2022 when the, the statistics came out that this should have been addressed. So final point as a reminder, when I look therefore at the UK statistics and I see where the numbers are, it doesn't look much different from September 2023. It should be 10 to 15% lower. This, in my view, is still representative of excess deaths, no matter what methodology and statistics they're doing here. This, in my view, is still a problem. I wish we had people like Andrew Bridgen, who was still around to try and defend the public, because it doesn't seem that there are many politicians these days who are willing to challenge. He really went out of the way. And I'm so sorry that that voice has been lost. I hope he continues in that role of raising awareness. The problem is, is that he can no longer do it in the political arena, but it needs to be done. So again, final points. If you haven't yet registered, there's still a few slots left for the Health and Wellness Network Session 3, as I guide you through the challenges of the pandemic. And critically, Disease X. Register for this. Are you prepared? Remember, for me, Disease X is exactly what we have at the moment. There's nothing new. It's just how do we prepare for viral infections? This one that continues to, to loom. So we want to get this to number one. We need your support. So I want you to subscribe. That way, when we release it on Amazon, you will be able to get it as well. So have a great evening. Look forward to sharing more valuable information with you in the near future. Have a great evening.